Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Maximizing Value through Proactive Stakeholder Management. My name is Robin Fernandez, and I am Director of Customer Success here at Tatango, and my counterpart, Vijay. Thank you, Robin. Hi, uh, everyone. I'm Vijay Rao. <clears throat> I'm Director of Product here at Tatango. Great. Thank you all for joining. So our agenda today is first, what is stakeholder management? And then how can I be proactive with my stakeholders? And then Vijay is going to be unpacking the stakeholder success block that we will be releasing over the weekend. And then we'll do a quick summary and Q&A at the end of our time today. So let's talk about what is stakeholder management. I get this question all the time. So let's unpack it a little bit. First, stakeholder. Who are these stakeholders? These are our key customer contacts that are important in the role of success and our engagements with them. They're gonna be our key drivers. They're gonna help us drive value, understand their company, their organization, their goals, and help us map all of that. And they're gonna be our key advocates. Stakeholder management is the process. So how are we monitoring our conversations and understanding if we are, how often we are, the types of conversations that we're having with our key stakeholders. And they're gonna improve our relationship the more we have those conversations, the better our relationship's going to be. And the result in that is increased retention and reduced churn, which is what we all want in the end. But let's talk a little bit more in depth about stakeholder management. First is about identifying the patterns with the stakeholders. Um, are the conversation patterns that we're having, are those matching the engagement model that we set? Are we talking to them once a month? once a week, depending on the size of the client. Um, are we connecting with them enough or is it not enough? And are we having those right conversations? It allows us to understand dissatisfaction early. They're gonna be able to tell us if they're unhappy or if there's concerns or if there's problems and their lack of engagement is a sign as well. They're not willing to talk to us. We know we have a bigger problem at hand. Making sure we're addressing their concerns proactively. If they're telling us that there's a problem, how are we handling it? Are we letting it sit? Are we taking action and helping to resolve that and making sure those escalations are handled swiftly? And then sharing it with the rest of the organization. If we're truly customer centric, we need to create visibility for the entire organization to understand the conversations we're having, who we're having them with. Are we getting executive involvement from our side, not just from the customer side, so we can drive to the right outcomes in the end. So how is this done today? Right now, it's really being done manually or in some kind of spreadsheet somewhere. Um, many customers are relying on CSM sentiment. Um, I have a few that have um, executive relationship score to take it a little bit further um, than sentiment, but it's much more manual. Um, and so you're not getting the sentiment as fast or as, as often as you would like to see it. There's no structure to the process. Sometimes there's tasks for, you know, account reviews or QBRs, but not for the other kinds of conversations you need to be having within your relationship with your customer. And then there's always those trailing indicators, maybe something that they've posted on LinkedIn. We know a lot of um, LinkedIn um, profiles don't get updated quickly. So someone may have left and that's why they're not talking to us. And then we find out three months later, it's because they went to another company. So I'd like to understand a little bit more about how you guys are doing it today. And we're gonna launch a poll to understand how are you managing stakeholders today? Are you doing it manually? Do you have some type of process? Are you like, what is this thing? And help me make this happen. It looks like a lot of you are not managing it or you're doing it in some type of manual fashion, which is what we hear a lot. So you're not alone. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on over to VJ, And he's gonna talk about capturing your engagement and analyzing it and walking you through our brand new stakeholder management success block. VJ, Thank you, Robin. Um, uh, uh, like Robin said, uh, the first step is, of course, to be able to first document the engagement and the various kinds of engagements that you're happening. <clears throat> and I wanted to uh, specifically have uh, a view of the touch point feature in Totango that gives you the ability to um, capture at the granular level all the various aspects of the type of engagement that you're ha uh, having. Um, you can capture the, uh, the type of engagement, whether it's web meeting or in-person meeting. I know we are not having any of those anymore. Uh, that was a thing in the past. 
uh, but generally having the uh, type of engagement captured as well as capturing all the participants who participated in the um, uh, in the touch point. Uh, what we also have is the ability to, of course, capture success flows, but for those scenarios that have some additional um, uh, tags that you want to capture to further classify the type of engagement, we have configurable touch point reasons that you can capture additional information. Once you have these pieces of information, the participants is really the key here where we can get into the next step of trying to capture patterns or decipher uh, any analytics that gets surfaced up. So once you have the uh, engagement documented, uh, you can capture various patterns such as what is the level of engagement that you're having? Are you having a certain type of engagement more than other type of engagement? Maybe you're only interacting via email where maybe you need to have a more uh, instead of a face-to-face, -face, maybe a web meeting. These are all various patterns and signs that indicate uh, the level of engagement that your stakeholders are uh, providing with you. And you could um, you know, uh, surface these uh, signals uh, up and try to take certain actions or decisions based on that. Um, obviously, um, uh, asking for feedback and surveys in a best practices manner at the right points of customer journey also goes a long way to make sure that you have a pulse on the customer. Um, once you have all these signals, it's not enough to just know about it, but obviously taking action is where you're gonna make a difference. And the key is to be able to close the loop, uh, uh, identify those low, low usage trends, um, act on them, identify the causes and try to take correct, corrective action. Obviously with the survey feedback, uh, you have a close the loop functionality within Protango that allows you to immediately send out campaigns or success plays and, and reach out and try to address the, um, the inconsistencies or the causes of dissatisfaction. And we're gonna, going to look into all of these uh, in a more detailed success block. So what we have uh, for those of you that are either new uh, or not used, uh, new to the Protango uh, community, uh, for uh, for the sake of them, uh, what I want to call out is that we have what is called a success block marketplace, where Totango is actively publishing success blocks that are best practices uh, that address various customer journeys. And like Robin said, stakeholder management is a brand new success block that we are looking to publish uh, this weekend. A success block is nothing but a set of uh, best practices, KPIs, metrics, uh, call to action, for you and your team on how to address various uh, uh, signals and trends that are happening as you are engaging with the customer. We'll look at all of these uh, metrics in a little more uh, detail in a minute, but before that, what I want to do is first uh, give you a sense of the account profile and outline certain uh, definitions of certain topics and then we can dive right in. So what you're looking at is the account, uh, one of your customer account profiles. We look at all the information that's available and we also have a place where we can see uh, who are the customers and who are we engaging with. I will just zoom in just one more level just for this piece. So as you can see here, uh, the two contacts that we are engaged with on this account is John Linden and Julie Schneider. Uh, obviously we can see that we are engaged at um, uh, decision maker level titles. And then the account role is a very important uh, field that is going to gain even more prominence with the release of the stakeholder management. So if you were already capturing the various account roles that these contacts are going to play in your engagement, you will now have the ability to surface up insights based on this. And this is what we are going to look at. Um, so let's go back, I'll zoom back out one level and then we'll uh, dive into the specifics. Okay, so once we have these uh, details outlined in terms of the contacts and the type of engagement that you're happening, uh, you can now start uh, creating segments based on this information. And segments in Totango is really a, um, a filtered set of um, view of users or accounts that you're looking to take action on or trying to view the behavior or the trends and metrics around them. Uh, so as you can see here, I have a simple segment with uh, specifically uh, filtered, filtered attributes that are using these touch point attributes. For example, I'm looking for those that 
contacts that only engaged via email. And I'm obviously looking at those touch points that were created in the last 30 days. You can see here that I have all the details and then I also have the uh, CSAT scores that I received from these customers. And I can view that here. Obviously, if I want to take action right away, I can. Um, I also have uh, what you just saw here was, uh, let me just go back here. What you saw here was a user segment. So what you see is a result of users. I can also have a similar segment where I'm just looking at all the touch points and I have the ability to analyze touch points across all these different fields that are there. For example, touch point reason, touch point success flows. So I can have all of these as filters where I'm looking at um, uh, various uh, patterns of the type of engagement that my team is having with the, uh, with the stakeholders. So now with that, if you look at the kind of patterns and the uh, insights that are being surfaced up, I can see what percent of customers are engaged, what percent of customers are not engaged. And this could be alarming depending on different uh, numbers and I can have various success plays triggered and we'll get into that in just a minute, but let's make sure that you understand all the metrics that is possible. You can also see the breakdown of the type of engagement that you're happening, that you're having and if one type of engagement is uh, too much or too little, you can uh, have your team uh, tweak that sort of engagement and make sure that ha you're having a more favorable kind of engagement that is helping you drive the right outcomes. Also, the touch point reason was a field that I talked about, which is an additional field beyond the success flows that also gives you the ability once you ha have them defined and your team is logging the touch points with those reasons, you can see where your team is spending additional time and even choose to do various sort of percentage representations. So there are a lot of different ways in which you can slice this data. Here, I'm looking at the type of engagement that I'm having by, uh, across different success flows to see which sort of business uh, customer journeys that uh, my team is spending more time on. And then here is the most important aspect this is the part where I'm able to see a breakdown of uh, what are the various roles across my customer's uh, organizational hierarchy that I'm most engaged with. And if this is in the right pattern mix that I, I expect, I want my team to be talking to more decision makers and more higher up the chain, I can have that insight exposed here and have corrective action taken by the team. Um, if, if this is right, this, this gives me a way to constantly monitor and um, you know, uh, uh, make sure that I'm on, on top of this. I can also create additional metrics here that give me you know, percentages uh, to see the uh, breakdown of maybe combination of things. I can do all of those things. I can also have a view of the various usage patterns of my key contacts and again, take action when I'm uh, noticing a change. And the key here is taking action proactively rather than realizing somebody has already uh, left or has already switched jobs uh, by looking at trailing indicators. So these are leading indicators that, that prepare you and your team to step in and take the corrective action so you're not facing a challenge when it's time for renewal and the customer is not seeing value and is already looking to churn. And then of course the feedback mechanism uh, is always there where I can constantly view the kind of feedback and the kind of experience that our customers, uh, especially the primary stakeholders are having and have a view of that and, and take corrective action that is necessary. Now, I mentioned taking corrective action several times. Now, each of these signals can trigger success plays, which is Totango's um, uh, module, which allows you to operationalize your team uh, when it, you notice a particular metric changing or trending in a direction where you want to step in and take action. And the idea is that you can have these tasks triggered for your team based on certain criteria already happening. And here, the beauty is that I can have these tasks with the context of the users that I want to have my team engage with. So I have the user's name here. Uh, so in the scenario that I described, if I have a a uh, key stakeholder who's given me a negative response in the CSAT, or I'm noticing that there is a 
uh, trending of usage in the uh, in the direction that I'm not um, expecting it to be, these success plays will automatically fire to your team, assigned to your team with the information of the users so that uh, the success managers can engage with those uh, stakeholders and address the concerns that they may be uh, having. And then uh, obviously the campaigns is for those scenarios where I want to send out CSAT or uh, NPS campaigns, you can look at um, yeah, you know, having campaigns being sent uh, either post onboarding or if you are doing trainings or PBRs, so you're constantly having a pulse on the feedback and making sure that you are uh, identifying those causes that are, um, uh, you know, affecting the usage and adoption of your stakeholders and uh, able to, uh, you know, make a change. All right. So uh, that was the uh, the summary of the stakeholder success manage, uh, stakeholder management success block, and this block. It will be available over the weekend. So look out for that in the gallery. And uh, you know, once it's available, you can download it and these metrics will immediately reflect on your system based on the data that uh, you've already started capturing. But if not, you always have the opportunity to start uh, capturing that data so you can start seeing the, uh, the, um, the patterns. Great, thanks so much, Vijay. So let's just summarize what we learned today. So we wanna make sure we're being proactive in managing our stakeholders, which will increase our retention and reduce churn. Uh, the stakeholder management success block provides KPIs and activities to drive to your desired actions and outcomes. And as Vijay just said, please make sure you download it on Monday. We're really excited about it. We put a ton of work in this to help you be successful at, um, with your stakeholders as well. So let's go ahead and check in for some questions. If you haven't typed in your question yet, please go ahead and do so in the Q&A. So Vijay, one of the questions coming in is, what is account role and how does it fit into the stakeholder management? So whenever you're engaging with uh, your new customers, you always have um, various roles that the account contacts play with respect to your engagement. You could have champions, you could have sponsors, you could have technical leads, and these account roles uh, is important for you to uh, identify and capture it in, in your account when you're engaging with your contacts in such a way that you can then analyze how, what are all your engagements and to what level within the organization are you engaged with and make changes to that pattern as you see fit. Great, thanks so much, Vijay. One of the things you talked about is our new touchpoint reasons that came out um, just a few months ago. And they're wanting to know what is the difference between a touchpoint reason and a success flow? Great question. So the touch, uh, the Totango success flow, um, uh, of course, customers use it in many different ways, but it's primarily designed to help you capture the various customer journeys as you go about doing actions. For example, customers are in onboarding or in adoption, or potentially you also have certain other uh, sort of sub-customer journeys to track in more granular detail. But the touch point reasons just provides an additional means mechanism of capturing some information about that's related to your engagement. That is something that spans across the success flows uh, for example, training or demos or any of those additional activities that you feel the need to track, you can create that as a touch point reason in global settings and then, you know, have your team log that when they're logging the touch points. And when that happens, then you can then start analyzing and um, uh, doing analytics on it. Great. Thank you so much. Um, well, another question that's come in is, how can I analyze the white space in my engagement? Can you clarify that for me? Yeah, certainly. So when, when I showed the uh, breakdown of the uh, engagements across various roles, uh, I can see a pattern where I'm engaging with certain set of roles and uh, I can also see the set of roles that I'm not engaged with. And this can surface up those white spaces to make sure that for, for me to take corrective action is to whether I should be engaged with those additional account roles that are in, um, that can have an influence on this account. Uh, so that's the white space, that analysis that you can do based on capturing all the account roles and the engagements that you're having with these account roles. 
Great. So those look like all of the questions that we've received so far today. Just as a reminder, we are posting the recording of this um, up, should be up tomorrow in our YouTube channel, Everything Customer Success. Um, so you'll be able to reach out there to um, re watch this if you need to um, when you download the new success block um, on Monday. Your CSM is also available to help you with any questions that you have that may come up while you're trying to um, get this rolled out for your own organization. So please feel free to reach out to them. That's what they're there for. Thank you everybody for joining us.